Hello everyone and welcome back. It's been another week. We have another episode of Survivor to talk about, but before we jump straight into the episode, I do just want to again say I'm so sorry I can't use like clips from the show or intertwine anything with that. Um not only is it a monetization issue, which I don't really care about. This channel isn't monetized. It probably never will be. Not a concern here. But also, there's no legitimate way to really record or gather clips from the episodes because there are so many anti-piracy measures in place while i totally understand that that's valuable but it doesn't even give content creators like myself the chance to pull from clips to use in a transformative manner if you try and record any sort of part of the show you either get no audio or no video and that's if the recording software you're using doesn't just stop altogether. It'll just not allow you to hit the record button and halt any current recordings. So I'm really sorry. Um, it sucks that our outdated copyright laws and current system um, and legalities around the internet are so antiquated that we actually can't, you know, share uh, content like this in a transformative manner that ultimately is better for the show anyway because it could potentially pull more viewers in but whatever neither here nor there just wanted to say sorry about that again and that's also kind of reiterate why this channel or this series is more of a like a podcast-esque thing with the episodes but that aside let's jump in like i've said before like i'll say again this episode, like all, started with the post-vote situation. Last week, we had two people voted out, two people went home in the first post-merge tribal because they merged too soon, clearly, and the first person voted out, Sifu, did not make the jury. That was supposed to be a twist. So, Sifu's not on the jury. Caleb was also voted out, but Caleb is the first member of the jury. Sad for me, Caleb was my pick. Anyway, we're on the beach, and Jake is having some mad regrets because he's the only person that voted for Julie with Caleb to try and save Caleb. And he really regrets trying to stand up for Caleb immediately because despite the fact that he did want to work with him, he realizes that this has really singled him out in the tribe. And he starts to try and like repair things with Bruce first. Bruce is pretty honest and is like, you know, I trust you less now, which from Bruce's perspective does make sense. Um, and I think Jake's just kind of realizing how he has shifted from, you know, second or third on the ladder to you know bottom rung uh he tries to talk to julie too and he explains that like my vote for you was less a vote for you and more a vote to keep caleb which i think is probably the best way to phrase that um and julie is taking it at face value and or taking it positively but then she says on the side that she has absolutely zero interest in working with jake moving forward that she absolutely cannot trust him and she even says to his face i don't know it just seems like um you'll work with me but only up until the point i go against your people and that confused me because that's what everyone is doing on the island that's she just described survivor <laughs> so I don't know. It's another one of those interesting moments where you can see how perception really is everything in this game. Um, if Julie had that same thought regarding, you know, someone else like, oh, Jake's going, well, I mean, she kind of is right now. Jake's going against my people. This time it is me, but my people in general by trying to keep Caleb. Can't work with Jake. Jake's going against my people. Um, but at the same time, uh, she is condemning Jake for having this behavior or this notion that I will work with Julie up until the point that she targets one of my people. Um, it's, it's really funny to me. It's, it's funny because it, it's just this circu circular argument that we always end up in, in Survivor. It looks like that whole Lulu, is it Lulu? No, Below. Um, alliance is really starting to crumble now. This Jake vote for Caleb really shook it all up. Um, and in like the midst of below trying to figure things out, we also see D and Kendra kind of start the talk of an all girls alliance. Cause I think at this point we have four boys and six girls. So the girls have like a two majority and they could easily just start knocking them all off. Um, they loop all the women kind of in on this. And at one point they're talking to Julie about it. And Julie says, you know, like she's definitely interested in an all girls alliance. However, she really wants to try and save slash keep drew and austin if not the whole time for as long as possible because she really really trusts them 
and really wants to work with them. Um, and she's not the only one that feel the, the f only one that feels that way about those two, which really speaks to how good of a position they have managed to get themselves in. Um, so like again, dynamic duos, they do damage. I, they never get called out when it's like two bros broing out as much. Um, but like it's just two people in a game of individuals is always going to be a dominating force. It doesn't really matter if there's romance involved or not. But anyway, it was weird to me that she voiced this, and I think she voices in an aside, not straight up to the group. This is another moment where having the clip handy would be awesome. But um, regardless, uh, also I'd be able to do live reactions, but I'm not going to focus on it. Anyway, moving on. Oh, sorry. Um, but she... She, she she says, like, you know, I want to do the all-girl alliance, but I also really want to keep half the men. Like, there's only four men, and if you really want to keep two, then there's only two to get rid of. And, I mean, that is probably smart on her end, because she probably wants to keep those two because she doesn't know slash think she is at the top of the girl alliance ladder. And just in case that proves to be the case, she can leverage those two to try and get a swing vote. It's smart. It honestly is. It's an exit strategy. Um, but, like, I just don't know about saying it out loud to the others. I don't think it's going to go well because it's it's pretty transparently what it is. And then really interesting, Kelly, after this, says, like, she she's definitely on board. She is committed to getting Bruce out um, because, you know, her association to Bruce is starting to damage her game. He's like this social ball and chain where, like, the negativity around him as a personality at camp or as a dominating force in terms of you know what's happening is is starting to become associated with her and she's taking some heat for that and that is crazy to me because she just had the opportunity to vote bruce out and just decided not to she was on the split that was debating on whether or not it was going to be bruce and for whatever reason, she decided, no, it's going to be Caleb. And so she voted Caleb, got Caleb out. Bruce is safe. And then right after that vote, she's like, we got to get Bruce out. And I just didn't, no one seemed to think Sifu was that big of a threat. Everyone was talking about Bruce. Very few people were talking about Sifu. In fact, they were only really talking about Sifu because Bruce wasn't an option. You know what I'm saying? It just seemed weird to me that like 20 minutes after specifically not making that decision, she was like, it's time. Moving forward to the next morning. Uh, a boat shows up on the camp, which is usually not good news. Typically, it's Jeff with something crazy or even worse, like a medical evac or someone asked to quit. You know, something like that. Non-traditional. Or um, if they're still in tribes, you know, like, oh, everyone's going to pick someone and they're going to go off to, like, exile or something and maybe get a secret advantage. It's typically something like that. But instead, what we see is a table with two racks and bowls. And uh, they find out that the Survivor Auction is back for the first time in 15 years. I think the last time it happened was 2015. Someone mentioned it in the episode. It might have been D. Um, which, like, shout out to her. What a fan for, like, while on the island, while hungry and stuff. She's sitting there thinking, like, 15 years. I think that was 2015. Like, that's wild. I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. I like seeing moments where you can tell one of the contestants is, like, a super fan. A lot of them are, but, like, it's cool when you see that because it's like, hey, I can see myself now in this person. You know what I mean? Whatever. Anyway, so this is actually pretty exciting, especially because they say it's going to be all food items in the note that Kendra's le reading to the tribe. So that's cool. They, they know going in it's all food. Food is something these people really need and really want, and um, they won't all hold out for, like, some advantage that's never coming or whatever. Um I don't know. I just I, I liked that, and I liked that they were upfront about that. And they also find out it's not going to work the same it has in the past. So part of these twists, you know, they're they're doing lots of twists this season, um, like most seasons, I guess. And so they've decided that you know it's going to be just food, and they're telling them that that's kind of a twist or a change. They also are not all going to have the same amount of money. Um, there are forty little bamboo tubes. You know, like they look like the tubes you would use at the bank to put in like that little air thing. I don't understand how they work, but you put it in the tube and then it goes and like it goes up and then it ends up in the bank lady's hands. She opens it, reads your check, you know, puts in your account and then it goes back to you um, and you like sign something or get your card. I don't know. Those things, those magical things. And they look like those tubes. That was all just to say that. And they have money in them, like cold, hard cash. Uh Interestingly enough, I think it was American. I think it was USD, which is weird. Why are they using USD? They're in Fiji. Whatever. Um, 
So there's there's tubes of money hidden all over the jungle on the island that their ba- beach is at, you know, their their uh, camp. And they all have to race to find them and gather as many as they can, but they can only grab one at a time. They grab the tube, bring it back to their bowl, set it down. If you're good, go look for another tube. There's 40 total. And whatever you end up with in your bowl is what you're going to have for the auction. So it's kind of cool. It's like a, it's a bunch of mini idol hunts accelerated where like they have to do it now and it's giving the same energy as when everyone's frantically looking for the idol together on the same tribe so i don't know i i really like this moment it was fun and exciting to watch and so everyone takes off like bats out of hell and they're, they're just racing through the force everyone's doing a pretty good job just like finding them quickly like at first obviously everyone's like oh i don't know what to look for but as soon as like they all start to realize what it looks like they're just finding them except for bruce who is like just not moving fast he's moving very slow and he seems to not be sweating it he's like putting on his shirt putting on his shoes talking about how he's not sweating it and these people need to not be running and i can't tell if this is like a strategy where he's like i know a challenge is coming and i want to preserve as much of my physical energy as possible or if this is the byproduct of you know someone who Because typically Bruce tells other people to do things, at least around the camp, at least by the edit. By the edit that we've seen, it looks like Bruce doesn't do a whole lot of shelter building, but he does a lot of, hey, we need to build the shelter. You need to do this. You need to gather this wood. You need to blah, 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 blah. He's never the one doing the blah, 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 but he's always the one talking about how someone else needs to do the blah, 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 blah. So to me, it was like, oh, yeah, this kind of makes sense to me. You can't tell someone to gather this crap, so you're not gathering any of it very well. Um... But I could be wrong. It could easily just be Bruce being like, you know, this is the auction. I know there's a challenge coming. I know it's going to be physical. I'm going to need my strength. And he's a big dude, big dude who hasn't been eating. You know, it takes a little more energy, like I've said in the past, to move bigger, muscular bodies. Um, So it could just be a whole energy preservation thing. I don't know. Hard to say. Likely. Uh, So anyway, Bruce starts to kind of mosey into the forest and he realizes everyone else has got like five six bamboo tubes and he has literally zero and manages to find one and still doesn't like hustle back to the bowl to set it down and that's all he ends up getting uh so it seems like bruce is kind of screwed Ugh. I just sneeze. So then we get our, our, our total amounts of money that everyone has. And I'm going to run through this real quick uh, because the amounts kind of matter. So Kendra had $360. Emily had $500. Jake had $340. Julie had $420. Austin had $700. Dee had $900. Drew had $520. Kelly had $700. And Bruce had $80. So you can see, I, I, it seems like there was a variable amount of money in each tube, which I thought was interesting. It wasn't always the same amount. Um, but everyone's mostly around like this 300 to 500 area. And then you have a couple people that are really big. Like Emily having 500 is pretty huge. Austin having Austin and Kelly having 700 and D having 900 is massive. Like they have a lot of money. And Bruce has $80. Um, so... This is what they're going into the auction with, the auction for food. And at this point, they get on a boat, they leave, or, you know, I don't know if they get on a boat. They leave their beach, and they go to the location of the auction. Jeff's there. He, you know, reemphasizes that they haven't done the auction in a long time, and it's cool that they brought it back. He reiterates that there's going to be no advantages, that everyone has different money amounts, um, and also this other new twist where... They get to find out how many items there are. There are 15 total items, but only five of those items are guaranteed because Jeff has a bag next to him with some rocks in it. Each rock is labeled with a number anywhere from 6 to 15. Whichever number he pulls is the number they stop after. So if he draws six, six items, and they're done. 15, 15, and they're done. And we don't get to know what number that is. So... Uh, there's another twist, and as a another, 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 another twist, uh, whoever has the most money when the auction ends loses their vote at Tribal, and this was, again, a decision that upset me. I, 
which is weird. I don't think anyone else was really bothered by this, or I'm not seeing a lot of talk about this, but like typically the auction has been kind of like one of those reward things where it's just kind of a lighter moment in the season where everyone can get a little food and there isn't much of a challenge. There's certainly not a punishment past maybe being someone who accidentally buys something gross, you know what I mean? Which was already kind of bad enough for the auction. Uh, and I don't know. The idea of losing a vote based off of still getting, still having money in a auction, it, it turns the auction into a challenge, which I don't like. And also losing a vote is just such a severe punishment for something is lighthearted and arbitrary or... I don't know, maybe not, arbitrary is not the right word, but lighthearted as the auction. It just felt very forced and weird to me. And also were the three other twists slash changes that were already done to the auction really not enough already to distinguish that this is a new era of the auction? It was already very different. But okay, moving on, twists equal good, right? I'm just going to kind of blow right through this because there's only a couple moments worth mentioning. This is another moment where I'd really like to show clips. I am going to keep complaining about it. I know I said I'd, I'd, I'd drop it, but I'm, I'm going to keep complaining about it because it does frustrate me because this I feel like this series could be a lot better otherwise. And I'll probably run into the same problem when I start doing Doctor Who later this month. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that, honestly. Oh, the best moment by far. This is probably my favorite moment of the episode, honestly, because... It involved Emily, and she is my current pick. But she um, gets some really good food. She gets wine in a charcuterie board, and she starts eating it and drinking the wine, and she just instinctively starts, like, dancing a little, you know, like, shaking it a little, which is hilarious because, you know, she's, like, an accountant type A person, notoriously uptight. She came in talking about how uptight she was, and now she's, like, cutting loose on camera and in front of Jeff. Even Jeff was like, who are you? But I, I love that moment because, like, I'm one of those people – where like if I get good food and I'm enjoying the food I just, and I'm standing especially, I'm just going to start dancing. And I don't know why, but it makes me giggle that like so many people without even thinking, just instinctually, something in our monkey lizard brain, we get good food and we just kind of like start grooving. You know, we're just like, uh, uh, yeah, good food today. Uh, let's get it. Or like maybe it's the energy coming in and we're just feeling the surge of like calories going through us. And we're like, oh, yeah, I can. I can keep moving a little further now. I don't know, but I really like that moment. It made me laugh a lot. We we filter through the auction. We keep moving. We keep moving. It goes on until we finally are left with two people, and it's uh, Emily and Bruce. Emily's got $60. Bruce has got $80, and it turns out they are out of items. How many items do they do? Let me count that up real quick. They did 10 items, 11 if you count uh, the fish eye covered item thing that jeff after uncovering it was like oh let's sell this one and austin bought it for a hundred dollars uh and i will say real quick before i get into uh how it ended there was this moment where jake bought a chocolate cake for three people and they were all eating it and um people were kind of like harping on bruce a little like being like bruce get in there because he wasn't really eating the chocolate cake that much but I just wanted to point out something I noticed, and I kind of understand this. As soon as they started eating it, I watched Bruce cut the cake with his finger. And I think I like he probably was having a hard time committing to eating this chocolate cake because a bunch of other people were digging their hands in it. And it's kind of an unsanitary nightmare because they're just eating and like sucking the chocolate off their hands and then dipping back in that's what i've pictured cause especially the way he was like cutting the cake i was like yeah he's doing what i would probably also want to do like section off a piece and like please no one else touch this because i i don't know if i think about it too hard what's happening it's gonna gross me out and then i don't know so i i, I just i felt bruce in that moment i don't like being sticky i don't like being covered in frosting or syrup or anything like that and i definitely don't like the idea of double dipping or eating something that's been double dip or drinking someone's backwash anything like that and even though they're super hungry i could just that's what that was giving to me and i was like i see you i feel you that would be tough that would be tough i would really want to eat the chocolate cake but i would also feel a little weird about eating the chocolate cake um 
so i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm totally off but i felt bad because I, I feel like bruce was like being like bruce get in there and i was like hey come on it's a little weird it's a little uh, leave him alone <laughs> And that's coming from me. I'm not even the biggest Bruce fan, but I'm over here saying like, hey, let the man eat the way he wants to eat. <laughs> anyway, the auction ends. Bruce has more money by $20, which is crazy because Bruce came in with the least amount of money. But that's kind of why he walked away with the most because he wasn't able to bid on anything. He didn't have enough money to compete in any of the actual auctions. So unless you know someone ended up with 60 dollars like emily and there was more items like it could have been emily because the, the, if there would have been one more item he could have just said 80 and it would be over um and i'm really interested what would have happened if they all would have gotten to zero i guess we'll never know either way bruce loses his vote and even though that's like good for me in my perspective because of who i'm rooting for and the fact that i've been somewhat rooting against bruce I don't even know about someone kind of actively rooting against Bruce uh, for most of the season. I still think it's too severe of a punishment. I still think it's kind of lame. You know, uh, it's it's I don't know. That's just my opinion. I, I think I'm probably wrong about that or at least wrong in the eyes of most viewers because I wasn't seeing anyone talk about that. Not that it really matters what everyone else is talking about versus my opinions, because the whole point of this is I'm sharing my opinion, but I can't help to see things on Twitter and feel the way when my take doesn't line up to it and start to like, am I being irrational or like, am I crazy? Like maybe I'm seeing this wrong. It just makes me question. <laughs> I literally gaslight myself <laughs> based off of what I'm seeing. Oh. Yeah. That's not healthy. Whatever. After the auction, we get a, a brief little window before the challenge and uh, Emily kind of pulls a julie and because of her current ties to austin and drew and how close they've been and how much of an ally and an asset that might prove to be to her especially a little later down the line she uh tells drew about the all girls alliance which again this puts austin and drew in a really powerful position like two people gathering this information that's huge that's huge information for them to have right now um and drew the dude is smart. Like, like I've said, he, he um, says, you know, we can actually maybe use that. If you can kind of steer them for a moment towards Bruce, we can use the sheer numbers of the Girls Alliance and a couple of us to force a flush of Bruce's idol, which is smart because they're going to have to take care of that at some point if they have any hopes of getting Bruce out. And Drew even further points out that like you know i think this is more of an aside like he really wants bruce out but in a moment where he's talking to katura he's like who who would you be interested in getting out and she's like well i'm down for whoever whatever you guys want i'm trying to prove my loyalty and they were like yeah you've already kind of proved your loyalty to us let us prove our loyalty to you by voting with you the way you want to go which is a really honorable way to build trust if they weren't it's actually a leveraging in this instance. It's not to say that it's dishonorable. It's just not like the honorable, honest play that it seems to be because they know, everyone knows, that Couture wants Bruce out. Everyone knows this. This is no secret. Drew also wants Bruce out, but by letting Couture lead the charge, she takes the heat for that decision, especially while we're ramping up to the decision. The only problem I see with that for Drew, honestly, is it also kind of removes the move from his resume or at least it'll be a little harder for him to assert that this was indeed his intention and calculation because it's just going to be based on whether or not they take his word um so i thought that was interesting uh i'm i'm curious to see how that'll play out moving on to the challenge uh it's a challenge where the players are you know on a platform and they're holding on to a rope that's attached to a big pillar the pillar is a third of their body weight before survivor so at this point much more than a third of their body weight uh at all uh so but they have to hold onto this rope and hold keep the pole standing while keeping their arm fully extended and every so often they will move down a notch on the lap uh, on the rope which will make the weight feel heavier because you're holding up more of it because it's slanted more that makes sense uh another kind of quick challenge like last week with the pole thing it's just it just comes down to you know who who lasts the longest and people drop pretty quickly usually but it's a 
I, it's a good challenge. It's a solid challenge. I can't even imagine how hard this challenge actually is. But before they jump into it, uh, and this is just an individual immunity. There is no double immunity, double vote out this time. Worth pointing out. It's, it's I guess, what the producers would call a boring challenge because there are no twists. I'm just kidding. Of course, there's a twist. Jeff also says there uh, four people can step out and sit out of the challenge to win a bag of rice that is deaf enough to keep them all fed until the end of the game uh and you know d and emily d pretty much immediately so shout out to d on this one shout out to d on this one i will always stand the people who sit out to get everyone food i do think that's hype and i do think it's lame when people screw over the people who sat out specifically to get everyone food i know it's an easy knockout but i I think those people should be allowed to stay in. I don't think they should be guaranteed, but I think it speaks highlier of the players if they honor that, you know? So D immediately is like, I'll step out for food. You're kidding. Yeah. Um, Emily pretty shortly after her is like, I'll do it. Katura at this point um, just kind of s- puts a feeler out to the tribe and goes, you know, well, like if we step out, are people going to like honor that? Like, are we going to not, vote those people out since they won't have a chance for immunity which is pretty valid coming from katura because she's been more or less on the bottom of below and maybe even this whole merge tribe hard to say uh she's just kind of been floating you know uh but she just kind of puts a feeler out there and jeff goes you know what i'll give you a motivator and she's like okay cool thinking it's going to be like a good thing and then villain jeff comes out again and stabs the bag of rice and it starts spilling out and he's like there's your rice and uh so this puts a fire under drew shout out to drew who steps up and he's like okay i'll I'll step up come on someone else quick we're losing rice um and eventually katura agrees to step out i again i do understand her hesitancy but i don't know it was wild um the, the whole situation was wild so they get most of the rice i think they probably lost like I mean, it's really impossible for me to say because it was like an opaque burlap sack, but like maybe like a third of it at most. Um, So we have four people sitting out. D, Emily, Drew, and Katura. No chance of immunity is a chance for them to get voted out. (laughs) Then we get to the challenge, and the order out is nothing crazy. I mean, I don't know. There's just not really a lot for me to talk about here. Uh, Like... It was Kelly out, Kendra out, Austin out, Jake out, Julie out. Bruce won with no vote, which is really hype for Bruce. And also, I kind of like that too, because I don't think he should have been screwed over by his no vote from the auction situation, because I think the no vote for an auction is like wild. Is this the challenge or is the challenge the challenge? We used to do reward challenge and then immunity challenge. Now we do both. And then once we get to the merge, it's just immunity i guess then sometimes you reward there it's just getting it's getting too weird like it just it felt like too much to me so like i kind of like that because it more or less cancels bruce out no one can vote for bruce but bruce can't vote for anyone so he gets like this weird jury view (laughs) with with the benefits of not being on the jury for this tribal um so that's where things land there was this one pretty solid moment for bruce though where um Austin was like Kelly says to Austin like oh man Jake's shaking a lot and uh or I think Austin says to Kelly Jake's shaking a lot and they look over and they're like yeah and then she's like how's Bruce doing and he looks over at Bruce and Bruce has the most the pokerest poker face I've ever seen in my life he looks like he's borderline chilling and he's just holding it seemingly under no struggle and austin looks back like disappointed to kelly but he's like he's looking pretty solid (laughs) and bruce did win so like he had that shit in the bag maybe it was because he didn't haul ass around the jungle maybe he wasn't as tired it's hard to say um but i will say that moment was like pretty hype like bruce was the main character for a minute there because that was awesome (laughs) now in the pre-tribe scramble um everyone seems to be really upset that bruce won everyone kind of or the majority of the of the merge tribe at this point is like we got to get bruce out at this point especially because he's got an idol and he's won immunity at this point and he has no vote and he's still won immunity like he's like the cat with eight million lives at this point and so they're kind of over it 
Um, Emily, Kendra, Kelly, and Julie end up talking about getting Jake out because Jake is really close to Bruce, or at least he was before that last vote. Um, but they're really worried Bruce would play his idol for Jake, which is valid because they have been really close and it would be smart. Um, so they're not really sure what to do there and they're thinking about maybe a split. Kelly is really worried that people are going to start targeting her at this point because of her relationship to Bruce, which again, I have to emphasize, you could have voted this dude out last night and you didn't. I don't get it. So then Emily and Kelly try to talk to Jake and feel him out see who he wants to vote for so they can tell him that's who they're going to vote for and also they try to convince him like they bring up his shot in the dark they're like well like we want to vote with you but if you play your shot in the dark we can't vote with you you know they're like we're just trying to figure out what's going on and he's like yeah no i won't play it if we're voting for anyone other than me you know i won't play it but like he obviously can tell what they're doing here because this they they just did not do a good job i don't know <laughs> i really have no idea what happened here it was the worst covert thing i've ever seen it was so obvious so immediately jake starts frantically searching for the idol like publicly too um so everyone knows that he's like everyone notices him looking for the idol frantically and they like it doesn't really help with the whole jake being on the bottom thing but he's kind of already on the bottom so i don't know what else you could do uh jake we don't know if he finds the idol or not but while he's looking for it at some point he turns to bruce and is like would you play your idol for me if it came down to that and bruce said let me gauge the room which historically has meant in the most polite and respectful way possible fellow player i would never play my idol for another person that's usually what that means <laughs> but you know we don't know uh i never saw bruce gauging any rooms or talking to anyone about it but you know whatever and i totally respect that by the way i totally understand someone being like uh no no i think i'm gonna hold on to my idol uh, i totally get that and bruce is well within his <laughs> like that is solid gameplay we get this really interesting pitch from drew on the beach after this uh to austin emily d and julie where he talks about how they need to get out kelly to disarm bruce um because she's so close to bruce which is literally what Kelly's fear was. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Austin immediately agrees. And then someone, it might have been Emily, which if it was, shout out to Emily, but I think it also may have been D. I'm not sure. Someone calls out that the relationship between Kelly and Bruce is very Sophie Coach esque. And I had never made that connection. But that's actually a pretty good way to describe it. I would say Bruce is more aware, more self-aware than Coach proved to be several times on, on the show. But uh, it is a similar relationship where you have one person that's like basically the excuse maker for the other one. You know, the, the person that's like keeping them reined in enough to where they're not getting too ostracized and voted off, even though most people find them disagreeable in one way or another. I don't know. It was, it was very interesting. Um, and Sophie and Coach were a powerful duo. Sophie got to the end. So like definitely worth looking into and talking about. We go straight to tribal after this. Before Jeff even asks a question, Bruce tries this really nasty, gross, humble brag about like and he's like oh jeff real quick how many people have had no vote and one immunity and jeff's like oh yeah i think that's just you and i okay on one hand i can understand being really proud of your accomplishments and wanting it to be recognized and highlighted i totally get that it's valid but the way it was done shows a lack of awareness because i feel like no one else does this, okay? No one else does this because on some level it would be looked at as rubbing salt in the wound of everyone else who didn't win. And, you know, I just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. It just felt gross and nasty and just like, dude, this is not going to make anyone like you more. Not that I would really care about that, but it just upsets me to see someone be so cringe, honestly. And normally I say to be cringe is to be free, like many other creators have said, because I truly believe that, you know, to, to, to be truly expressing yourself and not worried about what other people think of you is to be free. But this maybe ex express yourself in a more gentle way, I guess. I don't know, because this just felt like awkward. 
also i didn't like this because like bruce didn't lose his vote from like uh, an advantage like a beware advantage or like a risk where he like risked his vote in a little challenge thing it was nothing like that he literally raw lost his vote as a result of him straight up not trying like not putting an effort and i don't know like just I, I the whole thing would annoy me if i was sitting on that tribe stool thing whatever they sit on the benches something like that there's a uh, a really interesting moment here where um the, the entire tribe calls out Jeff for being like a, a wild man with his knife and stabbing their rice and forcing their decision. And Jeff is like, I don't like to be predictable. And that made me laugh because I think what Jeff really meant, and I don't get me wrong. I love Jeff probes for some, a lot of reasons. And I don't like some other things that I've heard and are pretty well backed up about him. Um, nothing crazy. I'll get into it or nothing crazy that I'm aware of, but, uh, what I will say is, um, I think what he really meant to say is, I, I like the feeling that I have control or all the power. And this was one of those moments where he felt like he really got to take power, you know, and force a decision on the players, get them to behave the way he expected to. Because historically, anytime someone has strayed from what Jeff has anticipated, things have been explosive. There's that one moment I'm sure some of you have heard about where Eric or someone forgot to say happy birthday to someone before they got voted off the island. And as tribal was starting, they mouthed the words happy birthday, just mouthed to the jury member. Jeff caught it and flipped out. He was like, you know, saying like, I can't believe this. Absolutely not. And just laying into them. And then they had to like redo it, like re refilm the uh, walking into tribal scene when there's been other times where people have straight up said, oh, hey, they forgot this on the island. Do you mind if I walk over and give it to them? Something that most people would argue would influence the jury. Someone returning a personal item and making the effort to specifically. Um, and Jeff's been like, yeah, go ahead. Why is it fine then? And then explosive then? I think it's because it's ver like Jeff got to say, yes, that's OK to one. He was in power versus it just happened. He did not get to okay it. Um, and you could make the argument that as the, you know, the host of the show, he should be the one who okays anything that a player does that might not be, you know, that might be outside the rules. Absolutely. I'm willing to hear that all day long, but uh, I don't know if you can justify the reactions. Like when Tyson brought in the peanut butter, Tyson and Brendan brought in the peanut butter and chocolate to their tribal um in uh was it token jeans whatever uh tyson's first season one and he pulls it out and jeff's like someone's getting fired you know what i mean like these intense responses to me they just scream someone who's like the second i lose power it's all over for all of you uh which is gross but you know being the host of a major tv show for 20 years will probably have some sort of effect on anyone like that this concept is the same reason why i know i didn't talk about this earlier but there's a moment where uh drew i think got an item in the auction that he wasn't super into and he was like you know jeff i'd be w willing to hear a, a negotiation if you got one for me and jeff goes no and it's like clearly a very hard pass and jeff reveled in telling him no and don't get me wrong i love a moment when someone tells drew no especially when he's trying to be all i'm outsmarting everyone it's hilarious to me but i think the primary reason he was told no is because of the way it was asked made it seem it was more like drew's idea drew's power move drew's in control and that's gonna be an absolute no from jeffrey jake has this crazy moment after all of that goes down okay where we're actually finally getting to tribal sorry and he tries to say it's not selfless to step out for rice because obviously you're doing that as a way to score points with the tribe but as he's trying to communicate this he just loses his train of thought and just like brain farts and i i i, I feel for him it's very it happens to us all but i was thinking at first like oh man that's rough like he basically just said oh it's not it's not you know i think it's kind of shell uh, a little selfless selfish to step out to give everyone rice and then they were like, why? And he was like, you know, it, with the thing in the game, like it doesn't look good. <laughs> it definitely makes you look that much more on the outside, especially when you have no argument. And then he ends up tying it to not even really just kind of going into like, you know, if people want to dogpile me, I think there's, there's someone here who's right above me on the ladder and they're making the wrong move by joining this dog pile on me 
and it's a little weird, but Telly ends up bailing him out a little and kind of trying to decode what he was saying, which is nice of her. And, uh, you know, Jake reiterates, there, there's someone right now making the wrong vote, and it's it's going to be the reason they're voted out next. And that's a solid thing, solid line to try and shake things up, I think, because historically in the past, it has done a lot of damage at Tribal and on occasion tipped the scales for people to stay in the game because it makes them actually think like, oh, it's not just about tonight. It's about tomorrow and the next day. You know what I mean? And because tribal happens in a moment, people vote in a moment. You only have to you only have to think you want to vote for a person long enough to write their name down and put it in the jar. Because if you change your mind two seconds after letting go of that paper into the jar, it does not matter. It literally doesn't. You have already voted. So like you just need to convince people of your argument for that window. Technically. Anyway, uh, then um, Jake has this moment where he says, you know, it, like let's say they're all dogpiling on me, you know, and I pull out my, I pull out, I were to pull out an idol and he does like this false start where he almost says my idol. I think this was, I I think, and it seems most people think this was him lawyering, turning on the lawyer really hard. It's actually a brilliant move. In my opinion, the best way this type of thing has ever been played. Um, he, he, I even think the brain fart beforehand might've been, part of this i think he was purposely trying to come in looking disorganized and you know not very in his right state of mind that way this slip up seemed more genuine as soon as i saw this moment i that's what i thought and i was like this guy is on another freaking level the scramble here is beautiful it really made jake shoot up in my notch of like i hope you win just because that was amazing um that moment by the way scared everyone everyone's eyes got wide everyone's looking around each other the moment he said my if i were to <laughs> and uh pretty much right after that jeff's like all right let's vote which is crazy <laughs> so they go into vote reading through the vote or but as we're starting the votes it's very clear that it's either going to be jake or kelly just based off of all the conversation we're seeing even though most of the conversation was around jake at this point during the tribal and uh Right before the votes are read, Jake decides to play his shot in the dark, which means Jake didn't even vote, uh, but he's he's hoping to be safe. He is not. He is not safe, which makes sense. That would have been insane. If there was two safe shot in the dark advantages in a row, oh my God, I don't even know. Like what? We get the votes and it turns out Jake gets three votes, Kelly gets five votes and Kelly goes home and she realizes halfway through pretty much like the second vote she sees she's like I freaking knew it and she turns over to Austin she's like did you do this and he shakes his head yeah and then looks down and I could not believe he admitted it while the votes were still being read you don't know that she's going home yet like yeah you assume but like she could easily still be there and now you've blown up your spot already it was wild Kelly was ripped apart by this decision probably because she was like i should have gotten bruce out you know i knew i, was, I should have been targeting bruce bruce like bec i got i'm being taken out now because they can't take out bruce and that sucks emily also admits to uh kelly that you know she was in on the vote too which is insane um jake maybe he truly didn't know this was happening but like when like the third or fourth vote gets written he has this moment where he's like oh people playing survivor and like he, it seems like he almost noticed that he maybe didn't mean to say that out loud because then he got like real quiet and small and he's like oh sorry kelly but <laughs> it's little things like that that can rub an entire tribe the wrong way why are you rubbing salt in the wound that's not very nice you know that doesn't make this pretty intense experience any less intense or less unpleasant you know it's it's just an unnecessary cruelty or it can be viewed as that a lot of times um so like i, I feel like that's gonna bite him a little especially because kendra was devastated by this vote and to have a, a face to associate with someone who's reveling in your sadness or what you perceive to be you know that's mm, mm, mm. i wouldn't be surprised if kendra ends up targeting jake or austin for that matter because i feel like austin's gonna unintentionally take the heat for this since he was the first one to kind of like be like oh yeah this was me i did this to you kelly you know uh i just i don't know sometimes it's like that regency effect you remember the first and last most and in this case the first is austin admitting to screwing over kelly depending on your possession and the last is jake being a little intense about the fact that he's still in which kind of brings me to the conclusion of the episode uh i don't know this is this this was an interesting one for me because 
I kind of felt like this was a calmer episode with a little less island tea and drama. But a lot of people are saying this was one of the best episodes in like years. And I will say, like, I enjoyed watching it, but I always enjoy, like, I don't know. I really like to enjoy things. So typically, I, I always enjoy something enough to watch it. But yeah, I felt like this was a calmer, easier watch of an episode. Other people thought it was, like, amazing, but that's where I landed. I, I do think Bruce is probably going to make it to the end, if not very close. I think he's going to become an easy, like, no one on the jury would vote for him, which may or may not be true. Like, Bruce doesn't exactly have a blank resume, you know? He, he's kind of been running the game in a lot of ways and running his tribes in a lot of ways. That takes some kind of strategic value. Like, that, there, there are a lot of juries out there that would look at Bruce's game and say, this is a good game. Like, this, this person deserves to win, you know? And I think the argument can be made that he deserves to win depending on who is up there next to him. So I do think he'll be brought as a goat. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to go necessarily the way people hope it will go. I also think Kelly definitely should have committed to voting Bruce out. Like if Kelly would have gotten Bruce out last episode, she maybe would have survived this episode. It's obviously impossible to say, but like it, it was so wild to me that she like decides to keep Bruce immediately decides right after that, that she needs to get rid of Bruce because it's risky for her game and then because they can't get out bruce and bruce is risky for her game she gets taken out like very wild i think jake or austin is probably going out next and i think um bruce will likely lead the charge if not kendra for that based off of the shocking vote of kelly going home that's my guess like i said i really didn't like that the auction had a loser it just seems like way too much um although that being said i'm glad that it was bruce purely for the sake that he also won immunity so it kind of canceled out it minimized that new twist because i truly truly think it would have been really really lame for anyone to end up going home because of the weird auction twist and them not having a vote you know like i don't know that just would have been so lame i really hope if there are any more twists coming up in in the season that they don't keep doing like this here's a new twist to this old thing oh and a new twist also this last uh twist that we forgot to mention just kidding there is one more twist we didn't tell you about earlier ha 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 now that we've already gone through all this you don't even realize that one of those things you did that you thought was good is actually bad you know what i mean like ugh. It's just too much. Like, we've been through this before. We've had this conversation as a Survivor community before. More and more twists do not just make the season better. And just having a high number of twists within one season does not automatically make the season good. It, like, sometimes there's... And, and it also, like, typically they're making twists to older, you know, challenges, older concepts. And it's impossible to really compare what these twists do and how they change the game as you know viewers as players and even as producers when you change several things at once you know what i mean you really can't gauge the impact of any of those individual changes because there's so much playing into how things are actually panning out now and maybe they don't care to maybe that's not important to them but it does frustrate me because i like to try and like compare it in my head and it becomes impossible when there's five independent variables <laughs> i'll leave it on the note of i have high hopes for emily i think she's navigating this pretty smart i think she's not someone that's being super targeted right now especially now that caleb's gone i knew it was going to go one of two ways either like let's get emily out immediately and just get rid of her and duke it out the two tribes or it was going to be fight over emily as a swing vote seems to be mostly going towards that second one um so i, I have high hopes for emily uh, because I, I, I've been loving her journey, and I think I think a lot of people are even saying, like, edit-wise, it seems like they're setting it up for Emily to win, and I feel like that's true, but I also feel pretty biased in that. Like, I, I latched on to Emily's, like, growth arc pretty early, and I was like, this is awesome. I would love to see this person win, because, like, there's something about that epic journey that is just so awesome. But yeah, that was Survivor this week. Um... I don't know if this episode was any shorter than the last one. I feel like it was probably going to be, but it maybe wasn't. Again, sorry I can't do clips. I'm really glad that people seem to be watching the series and enjoying it a little. I know the videos are kind of long, and I'm sorry about that. I wish they were more entertaining, but 
I need places to put my survivor thoughts, and I don't know. This is just the way I'm doing it. Yep. So, see you later, warehouse. That's all for me today. I will catch you on the flippity flip.